Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We are going to be going over how to create a hardcover cover on Ingram Spark. Let's search for Ingram Spark cover template generator. So Ingram Spark cover template generator. Okay. And this first entry that comes up should bring you to this template generator. Now I would give you a link directly here, but it seems that the link directly to this page never quite works. So the best way to get here I have found is through Googling. Now, once you are on this cover template generator, you will want to plug in all of your information. Now, if you have already started the upload process with your book, when you put in your ISBN, it should pull up the rest of your information. So I'm going to put in my ISBN and oh, there it goes. It has gotten everything correct and everything looks good to go. So down here where you see the price, typically bookstores will require this or they will greatly prefer it. So if your goal is to be within bookstores, you will want to include the price in your barcode. Now, if you're not worried about that, you don't have to, but it is a step I do recommend you take. So I am going to just go ahead and plug in that information and say yes. And then I will put in my email and click submit and it will send a template to me. Now, what we are going to click for file type is InDesign. Now, IDML is for programs such as Affinity Publisher and a PDF is for other programs as well. But we are going to be looking right now at InDesign and I'm going to be showing you two ways to create your cover. One way that is a cheaty way and it will get you to what you need, but it isn't recommended and the other way that is the correct way. Now, why I'm going to show you this cheat way is because sometimes we just don't have all the resources to do it properly, and that's why I'm going to show you that way. So let's click submit. So I'm just going to download that template and open it up. Now, if this error box pops up, you can just click skip. That's nothing to worry about. So now we have our template. So let's talk about what this means, because I know this is a lot of scary information. So first off, this is your barcode. This is going to be very important, and we will want this somewhere on the back cover. So I'm just going to leave it right there for now. Over here, it actually does have template instructions, but I know sometimes instructions can be a little confusing. I definitely have been confused by instructions before, so it's okay if you read this and were like, I still have no idea what to do. <laughs> so let me hopefully explain it a little bit better. These pink areas are going to be your front and back cover, and your front cover is actually over here on your right, while your back cover is on the left. So how you want to think about this is if you are holding a book and you open it and you have the pages facing away from you, you will be looking at the back cover on your left, the spine, and then the right side will be your front cover. So if that concept is a little hard to visualize, I just recommend you go grab a book that you have and open it up and lay it flat on the table in front of you to where you can see the cover. And I promise you'll have this aha moment and see exactly how this is laid out. And that really helps. So these blue areas here are going to be where we do not want important information. So what this actually is representing is... This pink is our front, this pink is our back. This line here and this line here is actually the rollover of your cover. So that's where it's going to bend over and then this blue space is gonna be pasted down on the inside. Same for these. This is gonna be your rollover on your edge and then this is gonna be all on the inside. Same for the bottom. These two lines are the rollover on your edge and this is on the bottom and again, same thing again. These two lines are going to be your edge and then this is going to be on the inside of your book. So anything in those blue areas won't be seen. Now I know it gets confusing because these blue areas are for some reason right here too. But if this is our cover, our cover will go along here and wrap over along the back. So we do need important information in this blue area. 
Why it is blue is because this is actually where the binding space is going to be. So right here on your book, it's actually going to be a little bit indented before it comes up for the cover. So this is where it will fold and bend and you don't want information right in these blue spaces, but you want your content there. So not important content in these two blue spaces. Now, what we like to do is throw in the JPEG that our illustrators gave us in here and not really think too much else about it. So paperbacks between KDP and Ingram Spark will be the same cover size, but if I go ahead and take that cover and drag it into here, I see this really funny thing happening. But what happened is these boxes with X's are called frames. Now what you can do is click on that frame, right click, go to fitting, and I can say fill frame proportionally. And now you can see that it has fixed that cover, but it's in the wrong space. So I'm just gonna click this little circle here and drag. And if my hands are a little shaky, if I just hold shift, it will hold that in place and I can drag it all the way over to where, oh yay, that works. But if you do it like this and you have a continuous cover like I do, it will make things look a little wonky in the end, so I don't recommend using their frames. What I recommend is going and deleting all their frame content off of here so we don't have to get stuck within those. Now, again, this is going to be the cheat way to do it, so I don't recommend this, but it will get you a cover. So keep that in mind. So now I'm gonna plop this in here and as you can see, it looks a little bit different because it doesn't have frames, but it's still way too big. So I'm gonna drag it to that upper corner, right click, go ahead and this time I'm going to do transform, scale. I'm gonna make sure this preview button is boxed, otherwise I won't see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna guess maybe like 25%. Yeah, let's work with that. So your percentage will likely be different. I'm gonna drag this to center and how I know it's center is I will see these green lines popping up. And yay, that's perfect. So as you can see, these blue lines are not cutting off any information. So this looks good to go, except, uh-oh, we still have these blue lines on the outside and I absolutely need content there to submit it to Ingram Spark. They will not take it like this. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that book and paste it. And I'm gonna drag it to that corner again, but this time I'm going to go transform scale and I want it to go a little bit bigger. So let's try 110. Okay. Now I know that's a little big and this is a little funny, but I'm going to go ahead and click arrange and send that to the very back. So now you can see I do have content in that blue spaces and it's basically rippling what I have on the front. Now again, this isn't recommended, but you're likely not gonna notice as a reader because all that information is gonna be bent over the edge and tucked in the back of the book. So if you have a JPEG that you cannot edit, you cannot move these elements in here, you're stuck, your illustrator is not working with you, perhaps they quit, they're not doing illustration anymore, maybe they deleted their original file and they're like, I'm not redrawing all that, who knows? If a situation comes up to where you cannot have it sized properly, this is going to get you a final product that works. Again, I don't recommend this, but it does work. So I am going to click on this top. I'm gonna to go arrange, just send backward this time, not to back. That way we get this little barcode and I like to put mine on the bottom right. Now I have two traditionally published books right next to me and one of them has it on the bottom right. The other one has it on the bottom left. You can put it wherever you choose. I just recommend picking something and being continuous with it. So for my series, they're always in this back right corner. But if you want to change it up, just don't do it until you start a new series and always have it on the back. And again, you don't want this 
barcode on the spine or on the front cover. You want it nice and pretty on that back cover here. So once you have this, you can go to File, Export, and then you can export this as an Adobe PDF and save that. And go ahead and just make sure this is in compatibility Acrobat 5 PDF 1.4. The rest you can likely ignore, so we don't need to do any compression or anything like that. And we are just going to click export and that will be good to go. Now, I do recommend you keep watching so you can learn how to do it the right way. And this is gonna be the way I do recommend. This is gonna be the way everybody prefers. So if you're an illustrator, if you have access to your Photoshop documents or your illustrations, let's move forward and do this again. Now we are going to go back to this Ingram Spark cover generator, plug in all of our information again, but this time we're going to download a PDF and let's go ahead and send that to us. So I got my email, I'm gonna click on this PDF and I am going to show it in the folder. I'm gonna right click that document, go to open with and Adobe Photoshop. Here, I want to go ahead and leave everything the same and click OK. So here we have our document and instead of it being editable like the InDesign file, it is just on one layer. So we're going to need to work with this just a little bit to get this right. First things first, these checkerboards make my eyeballs hurt. So I'm just going to click a new layer, grab a nice dark gray and put that in there with my fill tool. Okay, that's a lot nicer. Now what I'm going to do now is open my Photoshop file of my cover. So here I have it open and I am just going to click on my layers and select all of them and copy those. And I am going to come over here and paste it. Now, before I touch anything or click off of it, I'm going to go to Control G. That will put it in a group and I'm gonna turn that eyeball off for a second because I wanna do some work first. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so I can see this box a little bit better. And over on View, I wanna make sure my rulers are up. So if yours aren't up, go ahead and click that. But I always have mine up, so I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm going to click on this little move tool up here and I am going to click on my ruler and drag down and put a ruler at the bottom of the blue line. So what I'm going to do is basically put rulers on all my guides so I know where to keep my information inside of. So two on the top, one, or two on the bottom, now two on the top and for the side I'm going to do the same thing. I want it right there and at the end of the pink and at the end of the pink here and at the end of the pink here <laughs> and at the end here and at the very end of the book here. Now I don't have to worry too much about my spine, but just for the sake of it, we can go ahead and highlight where our spine is, but that's not gonna matter for the purpose of this video. So now if I zoom out, I can see, oh my goodness, look at all these crazy lines. So let me turn on my eyeball again so I can see my cover. And I am just going to pull this group and make that fit within this. So I'm just going to stretch it and stretch it again from this side. Okay, and just scoot that down. Make sure I have my text in here. Okay, that is fitting, so I'm going to click yes. Now this is pretty much exactly what we had when we first started with InDesign, but instead of taking it and enlarging it and making a ripple effect to cover that space, what I am going to do is do it the right way. So let me open up this group, and these are all my layers. So this is my front cover here so i'm just going to organize this front cover text this is garbage let me delete that okay 
So here on the front cover text, I want this to be centered in that pink space. So between this blue line here and this blue line here, I want this centered. So I'm looking at my S and my E on save and just getting that about right. Looks good, looks good. Okay, so that is now centered. Again, we're not centering it all together with the lines. We're only centering it in this box right here. So I'm gonna do the same for the back. So as you can see, save the scraps goes over into this binding space. So remember, that's gonna print a little ripply there because that's where it's gonna bend. So I'm just going to grab this and scoot this over to where save the ocean on this side here and save the scraps has about the same amount. So I just like eyeballing things. That looks about right, so that's good. Um, you can be a lot more specific if you really like measuring things, but I'm just not good like that personally. I'm a lot better with just eyeballing it and moving on. Now my background here does not have any of my characters on it, so I'm just going to pull this out and keep pulling that until it's bigger than that last ruler mark. Okay, that looks good. So now everything looks great. I'm going to adjust uh, my group of characters here. So Agwe looks good, but let me grab Kalisha, Frank, and Liam. Just scoot them in a little bit more. Okay. So that looks great. So now that is perfectly centered, this is done appropriately. So if you have access to your files, please do it this way. Um, what we're going to do now is go to File, Export, Export As. We're gonna make sure this is on a JPEG and pull this quality up all the way to high. And now I'm going to export that and I can save this wherever I want as a JPEG and save, and I am good to go. So back on InDesign, let me get rid of those two. So that's what we did previously. So now what I'm gonna do is grab a frame. So over here, it's gonna be that rectangle with an X through it, and I'm going to drag that over this entire document. Make sure it snaps to the edges and is the perfect size. And now I'm gonna go grab that image we just made on Photoshop. Here it is, I'm gonna drag and drop. Okay, it looks a little funny, but remember we know how to fix this. We just need to grab our arrow tool, right click, go to fitting and fill frame proportionally. Perfect. So that puts it there. Everything is perfect. All we need to do is right click, go to arrange, send backward, and we will have our little uh, barcode pop forward, and that's already in the right spot. And now, this is how you appropriately do a cover. It will be perfectly centered. Nothing is going over the edges now, nothing's being rippled, and there's nothing in the way. Now the last step of what you may want to do is zoom in here and add some spine text. So we're gonna click on this T and make sure it's on the type tool and we're gonna drag a little box. We'll do save, we'll do it all caps, save the sharks and I'm gonna tab over maybe seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then put my last name. Now I want to make sure that this is the same font as the other font on my book. So I'm gonna go over here to the properties panel I'm going to make sure this is filled white. I'm going to maybe try, um, let's do 15 font. And then let me choose my font that I have for my book. Okay, now I'm going to grab that arrow tool again and I'm going to drag this up to the very bottom. So my text box, I want it to be as close to the size of my font as possible. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna zoom out and grab the corner and I'm gonna hold shift and turn it and that should turn it in 45 degree increments. Now something to keep in mind is that the bottom of your text 
always goes towards the back of your book. So the bottom of your spine text always goes towards the back of your book. That's just the way it is. Don't put it the other way around. So I am just going to wiggle this down here a little bit, make it somewhat even with this font or this box. I like to have it somewhat even. And I'm just gonna zoom in and make sure, oh, it's a little close to that rollover, so let me push it down a few notches. That looks centered. And there you have it. I have my spine text, my cover, everything's beautiful. All I need to do is go to File, Export, Go ahead and save that, save. And again, for the compatibility, make sure it is the Acrobat 5 PDF 1.4 export, and you will be good to upload this on InDesign, and your cover should be perfectly aligned. Now in saying that, I do always recommend grabbing a proof and seeing it in person to make sure it all looks good before you go ahead and publish it. Sometimes you'll notice little errors here and there, or maybe you'll wanna tweak something, move something a little up, make something a little bigger. So always grab a copy of your book before you publish it. And that's how you make a cover for InDesign for their hardcovers. I hope this tutorial has helped and I will see you all next time.